This video is about my Excel spreadsheet for balancing a single cylinder crank. This is the spreadsheet. And what it does is graph the combination of inertia and centrifugal forces every 15 degrees of crank movement. And this is the graph right here in this case. This is a reference graph right here. If, if uh, from zero each of these forces, outward forces, are equal all the way around 360 degrees. This is no simple calculator. It takes all the forces. Let me read some of them to you. Kinetic force angle from horizontal, radius of arc, uh, velocity centrifugal force, pounds per, per foot of kinetic energy, vertical force, and horizontal force. All of those are uh, totaled together for every 15 degrees. And that has to be done because of this. It's called a connecting rod. If this right here was of some super uh, metal that weighed nothing, there might be a simple formula to do a crank balance. But from here all the way to the other uh, neck, it, um, it has an odd an odd movement because this is fully vertical and, hor and yeah, just vertical. And this end right here is completely uh, circular. But you have a combination of the two right here, and that makes it more complex. <clears throat> Probably the, the strongest inertial force you have is when the piston reaches top dead center and it's changing direction, so you have an inertial force that's upward, which is countered by the downward centrifugal force of the crank due to the two holes, two or more holes on this side right here. My calculator can also take, uh, compensate for sculpted out areas and cranks and allow different, uh, substances to be the filler for holes. This right here is the YouTube video of mine that shows you how to um, enter in a virtual set of holes to compensate for these sculpted out areas. This right here is to help you uh, get the right uh, calculated uh, weight for the uh, uh, balance shaft on engines that do have that, which would be the big bore usually. This right here is about adding in the, uh, the weight loss for holes and slots drilled in the uh, connecting rod. This right here is the page that gives the instructions on how to use it, which is detailed. Well, actually, this is the intro page to the instructions. This is the instruction page. This right here tells each measurement that you make, whether or not it's a, a measurement or a figuring out the weight. And you do have to have a little digital mailing scale to weigh these things on.
to get the grams for each one. A calculator like this is essential because of the connecting rod. You can't use the, the balance factor because it really is not a method to determine what the balance hole change should be. It's uh, really just a method of, of conveying to someone else with the same, same crank what you did to yours. It's not a method for figuring out what you need to do. So, uh, yeah, so you enter in all the details that are uh, described on the instructions page. And these columns out here are for the whole sets. For instance, these two are the same uh, same distance away from this center line. So the, the even though there's four of them, they're considered one set. So you have four right here. And the filler is air. So number one is air. Number two is plastic. Three is aluminum. Four is brass. Five is lead. And if you have some other substance, you can enter the uh, density right here. <coughs> So then you get the diameter, the length of each hole, the uh, the distance from the center of the hole to the center of the crank, and the degrees from this center line out here, from the crank center to the the conrod pin center. So these are twenty four and a half degrees off which goes right here if you do holes on the opposite side it's 180 degrees like what you have right here so um, for each of these rpm going up to the maximum that you state right here the calculator will will graph this and then put it uh, boil it down to a single balance number right here and then that number will, will be graphed right here and the idea being that the most perfect balance will be right at one at top rpm this is my ride and it's it's a small engine you know so the smaller the engines the farther off you can be this is nine percent off and i can't feel any vibration on it so uh I'm going to show you what happens when I erase that. Put zero, which nullifies all this info in this column right here with this set of holes. And it causes um, an imbalance to be more fore and aft of the, the engine. This is in line with the cylinder right here. And this is 90 degrees off. So if we if we click on the, the macro button right now, it will re-graph this and it will show the difference. Now it's going below the 1.0 line. So anything below is too much fore and aft vibration and anything above is too much vertical vibration. So I'm going to put this back at 2. This right here is the balance, uh, the balancer details after using that calculator at the bottom. So yeah, um, when you're doing this, without even looking at any of this, you can look just right here. The closer you get to 1.0, the better off you are. So you can enter in the holes that exist, and then hopefully you have room enough to put another set, or just you know change the diameter of existing holes. And it's a fantastic calculator. My competitor charges four hundred dollars. This is thirty. So I don't know what else to say. It's great. Try it, you'll like it.
These are the grass. This is the graph just of the vertical forces. This right here explains what each graph is. So that's it. Thanks for watching.